is one I've been looking forward to for a while. I saw the schedule come out, out and I was like, yeah, baby, we got a good one. Uh, <laughs> this one's going to be fun, dude. I- I'm so excited. It's like, A, I'm a big fan of gaming gladiators, but also big fan of a lot of the players on the side of uh, PSG LGD. So I just get to watch some, uh, some of my favorite players go head to head. It's great for me. Absolutely is. Nice smoke break from Y as well. Just running down in the tree line. I'm not sure if you really caught a glimpse of anyone, but they do manage to dodge out the smoke play. So GG's not quite going to be able to get aggressive, as aggressive early on, but they still have a really strong level one timing if they do manage to catch anyone off guard. Probably not too many shenanigans coming out here. Right. Dude, Clockwork Blood Grenade. That is actually... Dude, there's like certain heroes, the more and more I see like... It's just such a new item that you just kind of forget about it. But this is one of those heroes that seems very scary to have a Blood Grenade. Is They do manage to get the Impale here onto Ace. And they're going to start stacking up those uh, yeah Quills. And that will be First Blood going the way of Shiro. That is quite good. Yeah. They get the kill they slow down the viper a bit and they don't even have to pop the blood grenade they have on planet it does end up being a three for one on the bounties but having first blood on hand for sure is more than enough to compensate for that and yeah you're feeling good you're holding the tri lane as well because they've got that gate so they can look to bully this is one thing you can do against the viper level one level two it's still susceptible to a lot of forward movement so you can just try to bully it out let's see if planet finds a lineup here they do see the Knicks, and Kofu is just trying to bully up uh, Y right now. So I think we're going to see him leave. Yeah, Planet will go ahead and take the gate to the top side of the map now. So they won't be able to find the second kill there onto Ace, which makes sense. That would have been a very rough one if they managed to kill him twice, and Ace just playing a little bit safer there. He ended up going think... Nether Toxin 1 here on the Viper. As opposed to something like the poison attack. Uh, I don't mind it too much. It just allows you a little bit more wave clear, I suppose, to just farm up. Uh, you're maybe not looking to be as aggressive anyway until level 2 is up, level 3 is up on your clock as well. So just kind of sitting and waiting that lane and just kind of trying to farm. This can apply a little bit of pressure to that lone druid or at least a little bit of pressure onto that bristleback as well when he walks up to the lane. So you don't mind it too much as... You are being rather annoying here on Tofu, running around and just trying to grab the waves. But uh, it is not really stopping uh, Shiro too much. He's still having a pretty good time when the Viper can't be aggressive onto him. Just farming up. Yeah, absolutely. I guess we can talk about the mid lane in a little bit. We haven't really touched on this one too much yet. It is going to be Quinn's Lashrak versus, nothing to say, Storm Spirit. One of, uh, I mean, legendary heroes for both of these guys, right? Like, this is going to be a really fun matchup. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a back and forth. You've got a lot of play on both sides to look for opportunities early. I would say it's a little bit more threatening on the Leshrac early on, but as soon as you get six on Storm, it's a lot more manageable for nothing to say. Now we're getting aggressive up top here. It does come out with the Impale there, so Planet should be fine. But yeah, I'm taking a lot of damage from the Disruptor. I mean, Duraccio should basically free farm this. Like, Zeal, whenever he's going to use the Ion Shell to just push, like, you can just deny fairly easily on the Lone Druid, but also just kind of CS is fairly easily, right? He's not actually pressured by Ion Shell at all. So this is going to be a very good lane for the Lone Druid. Yeah, it's one of the things with the Darkseer as well, when you're going for the dual lane melee with the Darkseer and kind of just want to run down. If you can't, the hero doesn't get as much in lane until his levels are up, like until you get level 2 Ion Shell. It just feels a lot slower if you're not able to harass out. So this just leads to a cascading effect for Duracho to just have that safe build up, get his bear up and running, and just go Bottom go. Bottom lane, go from they're there. getting aggressive here onto Shiro. They hit him with the blood grenade, and the break does come out, and that will be enough to find the kill. Now, why on the run? Tether already spent. Cogs to hold him in place, and that's going to be two kills in this bottom lane. They both go the way of the clockwork. But this is going to be a vessel rush out of Ace. Like we said, if you get a vessel builder this game, it's going to look very good. So no earn charges yet for Ace. But, I mean, at this pace, it's not looking like it's going to be too hard for him to get some. Yeah. Top lane. 
Okay. An aggressive here on his zeal does not get the uh, root from the bear. So he will just go to try and cut the wave instead. But you're not doing enough to stop Dirachra from farming. Again, this is oh, going to be no, an issue. Boots. Oh, wait. He dropped the boots on the ground. Wait. Did, did they did they know? Zeal? One more auto attack is dead. Dude, if they actually see his boots there, he's so screwed. Meanwhile, mid lane Quinn gets rotated on the planets. Nyx Assassin unable to finish the kill and instead hits him with a split earth, catches him next to the tower, and Sullery will finish him off, gets the double kill. And a glimpse pulls nothing to say back into the hands of the clockwork as he makes his presence known. And a massive win here for the side of Game and Gladiators as they end up resulting in three kills. And Zeal will pick up his boots at the end of the day, but oh man, that could have been so bad. It would have been really awkward if he missed out. I think he was, uh, it would have been a huge impact into his economy early on and his ability to control the lane. A very strong start for Gaming Gladiators already, though. 1-5, to five, 2k lead up. They're getting some good punishment with their own support rotations across the map. And as mentioned, I mean, they've got solutions for the draft that PSG LGD is bringing out here. Whereas for PSG LGD, it, it does feel all in on kind of getting this running start on Shiro on the Bristle. Just hit that point where you're just an unstoppable force up front with Yayo, but with a Viper on hand, it just doesn't feel like you'll find that tempo comfortably on that combination. And, and for Zeal, his lane's just, it's not feeling great when he gets glimpsed back like that. No, oh, and what a good fear oh, there from Duraccio. Pulls him right back in, and there it is. Lone Druid finally grabbing his first kill of the game and continuing to just farm freely under his tower. Yeah. It's just nothing to stop him. And this is one thing with PSG LGD's draft. I mean, you go with the IO, sure. You've got the Nyx to kind of help you out in lane, but that does mean you can't really relieve pressure on the other lanes. Not just yet. Not just quite yet. Down the line, you're, you're going to be able to be a battery, a good source of boosting your cores. But the laning phase on a slow start like this can feel rough. 3k lead already up for Gaiman. So they are just finding pretty much everything they want. Like, they've got level 6 up on Quinn. No edict up yet. His output is ridiculous if he does manage to lock in nothing to say. Nothing to say. Just kind of jungling to try and get his own EXP going. Is about to hit the 6, so it is going to be safe soon, but this is rather overwhelming from Gaiman so far. This kind of start. Once this bear has the full Mask of Madness off, it's just going to be a little bit too hard to manage, it feels like. Zeal. Gets caught from the glimpse once again as the creep wave just gets pulled into the hard camp instead. And Quinn will just farm up the hard camp or medium camp, rather. Dude, I, I there's so many new camps. Oh my goodness. Um, uh. Shiro has just completely avoided bottom lane now. He is just jungling with the IO. And I mean, this is one of the things that you can do now, which is quite nice, right? But this is setting up Viper to be incredibly strong. He's level six, the earn completed, queuing up the boots of travel immediately. He wants to play active. I like I like that read from Ace. You know, you just run down, you prevent the side of PSG LGD from trying to work the lanes, from trying to work the jungle once you can be Nat Mobile on Viper and just threaten across the map. And like again, it it feels awful playing catch up with multiple cores, and in this case, it does feel like everyone's going to need some space to farm. Even nothing to say is lane up against Quinn. Is, it's just not comfy. They will smoke up, though. Oh, they're going to have Viper the Strike Zero bottom. And stuck inside the Cogs and the Nether Toxin. He's going to fall. Meanwhile, Zeal in the top lane, chased down here by Duraccio. He falls as well, so two kills in the side lanes. And a 5k lead now for the side of Game and Gladiators. I mean, PSG LGD, they went for a three-man smoke with nothing to say, but they get jumped before they can get anything done. So they're just not able to do anything with his time commitment, nothing to say. And, yeah, nothing to say. He's running low on this mana here. Quinn does pop the Arcane and tries to chase here, and he's going to have to spend all of his mana just to survive. No TP for 25 seconds either, so he is going to be in no man's land. Celery hoping to see if he can find him. But, dude, this Disruptor is level 5. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Celery's gotten away with way too much. He's been active. He's got two kills under his belt, three assists on hand. Five out of the eight kills he's been there for his team. Yeah, and still he got... find something to say. 
Yeah, ends up sniping him. That glimpse damage, dude. It's no joke. Three points in glimpse right now. Yeah, and that, that's glimpse already being touched down a bit on the output. Still a really strong spell to go into. Nine to one. PSG LGD. And this is where it gets worrying, right? You play from behind, you're farming on literally every core. There's no playmaker Ace to turn things around again. for you. Viper strikes up the bristleback. There is no hope of that. Just gets ran down once again. As Ace collects another urn charge, looking to get towards the vessel. Is his boots of travel are done, man? They are coming on the courier. We have three cores approaching the 5k net worth mark at 10 minutes that is like the golden number right if you're if you're like a carry you're like oh man i'm gonna be so stoked i'm gonna hit 5k net worth by 10 minutes you have to do it on all three of your cores man yeah it's it's so oppressive for psg lgd to play into this as planet uh, he's gonna get glimpsed back into the mid lane as celery sets up an easy split earth there as quinn grabs himself another two zero and two on the lash and Gaming Gladiators, man, this team is a well-oiled machine, dude. They just do not miss. They really don't. Like, they know what they want to do. They know the timings they have to hit. They know how to work their lanes out. And for PSG LGD, again, they had some ideas with this draft coming in. I think it just fell apart with Lone Druid pickup and the solution in the Viper. Like, so your Darkseer lane doesn't go as fast as you'd want it to. Your Bristleback lane isn't free at all for Shiro to just sit back and farm. He does have his vanguard up, which can help the cause a little bit. But it still has a lot more to work towards on this hero. And he's just not being offered that much space. They are smoking out on LGD with Zeal and Planet. They don't have this is, their ults up. It's a level 4 Nyx and a level 5 Darkseer. I mean, a Wall doesn't do a whole lot of good, but Planet's got to hit a huge stun here. Does manage Ooh. to hit Ace, and they do drop the wall here finally, but there's the Viper Stride and the break. The rotation in from Celery. He's trying to just help bring down the Bristle back, and Ace, does he survive? The Glimpse will allow him to. Just a sliver of HP. Zeal's got a vacuum. He's trying to heal up, but Ooh. he misses. Just barely out of range, and now heavily punished as the turnaround comes through. Ace gets himself a double kill on this Viper. Dude, everything coming up. Gaming Gladiators here. What a rotation in from the Disruptor. And with all that free space, the Roger just pushes and... Look in mid lane. Quinn, he's running a little bit low here, but now Ace comes in. He's got those boots and even Duraccio. They missed the fear, but he's looking to chase down Planet potentially. Now, it does not get the root. And it looks like they might just settle for the mid tower instead. I mean, they've already taken top. The offlane towers are such a big deal. Now you have triangle control and potential reach into the knowledge rune and the tormentor. It is not a good feeling right now for PSG LGD losing these two objectives very early on. I mean, again, that farm distribution as well from Game and Gladiators is still so even. Perfectly even. Within 40 gold of each other. That's just madness. And for LGD, it's a catch up game now. All your cores need to farm. Your Storm, your Darkseer, your Bristleback. They need some catch up gold. And that just means you're going to have to play passive. There's no one that the Nyx and the Io connect to. You might still be able to get decent Io Storm plays. But with the threat of Static Storm already on hand from Celery, it's not the comfiest spot to have nothing to say, make moves early on with that threat there. Yeah, I mean, you have three cores approaching like 500 GPM at 12 and a half minutes into the game. That is an absurd number. Uh, it's not going to be easier than to play around this, but they do get the scan. Uh, but nothing to say pops the smoke. So he's gonna get out for the moment you're, Again, you're not really finding a whole lot here on the side of PSG LGD though. Shiro It's only level seven on this bristleback. IO still only level five. So you're missing a lot of experience on these side lanes I mean, they, ju they just have nowhere to go. They can't hold the lanes They're trying to jungle early on which they can do with her heroes to be fair i think storm's the only one that really struggles or is slower than these two other cores and just playing the camp game like zeal's all the way forward up top sneaking what he can you've got safe space for sure to work up top as well on the side so th there is a recovery but man it, it doesn't feel like it's going to come out fast enough unless you can make a play happen maybe when you get your support sixes that's where it can shine like planet and y getting their ults up they can make things happen although oh my gosh quinn has bloodstone already as the bots come into nice. the mid lane they catch the io with the vessel as well it's gonna be a two quick kills for the sign of gaming gladiators 
just before the wisdom rune spawn as well i mean they this gives them the opportunity to just go deny even more xp from the side of psg lgd as they just look top for shiro and yes they're exactly what the is gonna do he's just sent the baron he's gonna take the rune right away from the bristleback yeah and they can't contest you're too under farmed and bristle to feel comfy up there up against a very big bear and quinn will just grab it for himself happily topping up his bottle leading to faster levels into that 12. how do you stop this again the timing for psg lgd to maybe come back is just going around with vendetta looking for an opportunistic kill that you can relocate on top of that might be how you start to find these pickoffs to drag this game back your way and you do hit six on planet now but you don't have that relocate up and running yet on why it should be coming up shortly but again your cores are not comfy to rotate right now they just don't have the items yeah i mean the xp difference is the main problem right now for the side uh of bsglg like both supports on the side of gaming gladiators are level eight uh you have disruptors even you know like almost level nine but you just don't have enough coming out of the supports right now it's it's a little bit rough a smoke gonna get popped here by planet under the cover of vendetta so that is a nice little play from him smoke does pop again and they will catch the next assassin off onto the side here as impale does come through buys him a little bit of space but easy pick off there once again and seraccio has a deso dude is he's fully farmed up he's been allowed to just hit this key timing he had a really good mask of man in his phase boots timing with the deso up and running as well once they have that opening they can just melt and they find another it seems to just be never oh. ending he tried to reload him out on the timing but it's just not enough as the glimpse was there you lost shiro and you're about to lose the io as well as he's got no friends coming to save him and that's going to be a pretty easy pick off there for duraccio so two more kills. Gaming Gladiators are just relentless right now, man. 18 kills in 16 minutes. I mean, they're, they're just they're just showing off. <laughs> you know, it's 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 rough for PSG LGD, and they had a first a good first series to go off of, but Gaming roach. Gladiators have w had way too much experience on this patch already. And but Roshan, it's not gonna last long with that Deso on your bear with the output you have on hand. This this just melts. So watch your control going your way. A secondary life to hand on to Quinn more than likely here as well. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a lot to have to melt through. And Duracho is copying a bit too much damage. Should be fine. Yeah, I mean, he'll heal it all off from the bear, right? It's not that big a deal. Quinn grabbing Aegis. You've almost... You're like over halfway to an Aghanim Scepter on your Viper now. So you're going to have that nosedive coming up. Which... It's, it's one of those abilities that... I still don't know how good it is because it does feel like kind of mess sometimes, but it, it's a lot of damage that can come out from it. Yeah, it is. Especially in this kind of game, I think it's it's a very good game for that Ags. They want Celery. I mean, this would be nice if they can get him, but the hook shot comes in from Tofu, beautifully blocking him off, and now Quinn coming in as well. Just a clean up here on the planet. Oh, man, they just all got each other's backs, and bottom lane, Zeal will get found by Ace. Of course, he does have a surge coming off cooldown in a moment. But he's got the stacks up on this poison attack, and Zeal's just going to hit the gate and run. Viper Strike and the Vessels there, a glimpse from downtown even to secure it, and Ace gets himself another kill. They had to, they had to drop Wall along with Vendetta to try to find that kill in Celery, and they can't even find it. 1 to 20. 15k lead, tier 2 mid faults, onto the high ground they go from gaming. Nothing to stop this. They can't even clear out the creeps. There's still one range creep here from that zip. And the whole next These towers just melt. Dude, Gaming Gladiators won their first game today in just over 18 minutes. They might do it again. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. It, it feels so hard to come back into this for PSG LG. So they have a second four tier to stop this lone druid, but what hero can you actually bring is the question. Okay, never mind. They, they did cut the next wave, so nothing to say did grab that one. But both forts are down. They can start pushing through bottom instead. So they're going to get the second tier two tower. Quinn going to try and soak up some damage here on the wave as planet 
<laughs> might rethink this. No points in Spike Carapace yet as he's only level 7. Impale here will stop the Lesh TP on out as they are looking for nothing to say. And Static Storm is there, but without the help from, from the Lesh, I don't know if they can kill him. Glimpse back. Zips away. Nothing to say. Should be fine. As Durancho Ooh. gets the tier 2 tower. Oh, he's not no. fine. Kofu gets him on the hook shot. Up onto the high ground. He is out of mana. And they're going to block him off there with a kinetic field. NTS. Oh, man, dude. This is not your base, my friend. You cannot <laughs> go in there. Uh, he TP'd under tower vision. Just and, on uh, the I'm edge not sure of if it. you noticed. The base is still under siege here. They're going to get a nice impale stun here on the Duraccios. He doesn't have that Aegis, but he's taking so much damage here from oh, Shiro. Oh. He gets the TP out. No way. It's just Quinn versus the rest of them as now in comes the TP from Ace. Boots of travel. He has the Aghanim Scepter completed. You spent the BKB on the Bristleback, and it wasn't enough to kill this Lone Druid. Dude, that feels so bad. It feels awful for PSG LGD right now. Like, you throw everything you have and trying to kill these two isolated cores with no with no supports. You know they were jumping, no, nothing to say there. And they still don't so, manage to find it. They got the glimpse. They found Shiro. Ace is ready to go without a BKB. The vessel, the break. He gets reload out. And that will save him for now. But he is still so dang low. You can't stop this push now as Quinn's here. You're obviously waiting for that... Uh, Duraccio Lone Drew to be able to make his way back to the bottom lane, but why Will Falls, the reload, obviously sends him back into the enemy team. Does have buyback, but no one can stop the push. There's a 20,000 gold lead now as the bottom lane of Barracks will fall. And yeah. NTS can't really join the uh, defense here so Duraccio and Quinn will clean up mid with ease. Dude, this Lesh and Lone Druid are just shredding these towers. Hey, it's it's just too fast. They have nothing to stop this. Again, with a slower laning start, you just don't oh, have to play. Beautiful Static Storm catching three. The hook shot in from Tofu as well. The GG comes out. They're just all Woo. dead, man. Jesus. What a clinic by Gaming Gladiators. Yeah, that's that's insanity. That is insanity coming up from Game of Gladiators. They get a good read on the draft that LGD is bringing out. You know, they have the counter to the Darkseer lane with the Lone Druid. They have the solution to the Bristleback with her Viper as well. So none of the lanes for PSG LGD could get off to a stronger start. Even her, even their mid lane matchup 